And I'm delighted to say we've been joined in studio by Ireland's very own good luck charm, that is the commentary team of Alan Quinlan and Dave <laughs> McIntyre. Uh, how was it, lads? I mean, like, do you feel, do you take some sort of credit for what Ireland achieved over the last couple of weeks? It was, it was all down to you, really, wasn't it? Absolutely. It was they couldn't have done it without us, I don't think, Dave, could they? Well, we were the missing ingredient. Oh. And whatever that edge they needed to get over the line, we produced it. We were pretty lucky. We were pinching ourselves all the way through because uh, potentially this was, this was a situation that... You know, it could have happened beforehand and you think back to the drop goal in Paris, we were probably looking at each other when, when Teddy Thomas gets that try, weren't we? Saying, How can oh, this no, be happening? It's all over after one game, that kind of dream of a Grand Slam. But uh, we were lucky, lucky to be part of it, I think, and uh, yeah, it was enjoyable. Well, congratulations to you both, it was great coverage. Uh, we are going to obviously talk you about... Are bias now or like would you... Uh, but, uh, kind of pro. Well, you know, well, I'll, boost he, was, he was watching the BBC. <laughs> exactly, yeah, but a bit, bit, bit of ITV here and there as well. Uh, NBC where possible. Uh, the Champions Cup is back this weekend. Uh, it feels like an age ago that we were chatting about Champions Cup. It feels like a new season almost that any sort of momentum that you'd hope to carry through the pool stages is probably gone to a certain extent. That being said, any momentum that got you a home quarter final is good momentum. That's what the Six Nations does, doesn't it? And yeah. uh, I always remember as a player. You finish up in that Janu January period and you want to be ticking that box and saying we've a quarter final coming up. It gives that little bit of a feel good factor throughout the squad. Uh, but then it, obviously the mind switch totally, six, totally to the Six Nations. But creeps up quick. You've got to be ready for it. And, and you know, both Mo Leinster and Munster this week will. And their coaches, I think, and this is probably the key, the last few weeks, their coaches, Dave, will be planning this match. You know, the Munster guys just and, and the Irish guys with Leinster, they integrate back into the squad this week. But the planning that's gone into this has gone on for kind of two, three months. They've been watching the opposition teams, planning game plan structures, how to integrate them back in, all that stuff. So there's a lot of planning gone into this. Yeah. Is it, it fair to say that for a club qualifying for the quarterfinals is, is actually more important and bigger than actually playing in the quarterfinal itself? Because it keeps the people people's interest over the course of the winter. You've got this huge day to look forward to. It's going to bring more bums on seats when it comes to Pro 14 rugby. It, it gives a, It's a different backdrop to the Six Nations when you're looking at your players, but we don't need him to be injured. He has to be back for the Saracens game or the Toulon game. Players are constantly thinking about it because obviously you can go out the quarterfinal, you can bomb, you can lose the game, but the build-up lasts four months. To get there is important. Yeah, um, you have that deflated feeling. and, and Does you feel like your season is over if you yeah, go in the pool stage? You know, you kind of with respect to the league, you want that's the one that kind of really drives you into April and the finishing end of the season. Okay, you have the disappointment if you lose a quarter final, but you have a bit of satisfaction that there's progress being made um, because it's it's a very tough competition to 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 win first and foremost. But to get into semi finals, even quarter finals, you know, your top eight in Europe, it's a tough competition. You see the way Sarri snuck in as, at number eight. There's a lot of good teams in that in these quarterfinals, so um, yeah, there's a deflated feeling within any club who, who really have that ambition to be there first and foremost if they don't get there. There is really a kind of a sense of fear of missing out if you're not in the last eight this year because the quarterfinals are so bloody good this weekend and we were just discussing this outside, we'll start with the Munster match and I guess given the relative quality of Toulon and the, the great teams that have come to Thoman Park in the past and indeed the injury troubles that Munster have at the moment, this would be right up there in terms of the great Munster wins, in, in, let's say in the post Ronan O'Gara era um, of, of wins at Thoman Park, if they actually did this tomorrow. Like, granted, Thoman Park, they've only lost one uh, home quarter final there. They, they've got seven uh, out of eight records at Thoman Park. But still, the quality of Toulon is unbelievable. Yeah, the one they lost, of course, was that Ulster game in yeah. 2014, was it? 2012. Uh, was it 2012? Was that far away? Yeah. When they went to the final, yeah. I think in 40, yeah, they lost the semi final in 14 to Toulon away. Um, it's, it's, when you look in paper and you put down a Toulon team in paper, and I was looking at them during the week, and you always get people saying, Well, how will they do at the weekend? How will Munster do? And you look at the put down the players, and you automatically you get. You get nervous. You look at who's possibly going to be playing the centre. Teams announced later today. If this was at any stadium in the world other than Toulon Park, would you be able to put together an argument for a Munster win? No, you wouldn't. Um, but then I remember that game, in s that semi-final in 2014 in Marseille, and I looked at the paper, teams on paper again, and I went, oh, this is, could be you know, a real tough day. And I remember Munster were in that game, and they caused a lot of problems, and you think Leinster went there. So e uh, take out the home factor, the quarter-final. The history of the competition ignites players, it lifts them, 
it, it makes them play above themselves. It brings a real kind of enthusiasm, energy. Um, because it's such a big stage, you know, it's not your normal league game where this is different. Um, the excitement, I always remember the excitement the week of European games, it was just different. You go into training, there's a buzz, there's an energy, the bag man, the, you know, the physios, the medical team, everyone has their game face on. It's just different weeks. And um, they're great weeks. They're play weeks players want, want to be part of. For the Munster guys, with Toulon coming, like I said, you look at, you, you Google the Toulon squad and you look at the names and you're thinking, the amount of caps they have, the experience they have, you're looking for any sort of chink. You're looking for any sort of reason why, um, you know, they may lose in Thoman Park. The Thoman Park factor, the history, the competition, the pride in the jersey is one that kind of, you know, Munster have kind of prided themselves on uh, throughout that competition, the passion that you have for your home jersey. And you think, Toulon, budgets, players from all over the world, what does it mean to them? But they've shown, and they're probably the greatest team in the history of European rugby because they won it three times on the trot. Never been done before by anyone. So you just, then there's uncertainty about Boujalal, the owner, players getting paid, they're away form in the top 14, they've lost 10 games. Um, and you think, you're kind of looking for positives, aren't you? But on paper, you think, Toulon, how do you stop Bastro and Nano in the centre, for example? It's a big question. How do they? What do you think, Dave? <laughs> how do they stop them? You know, well, you, you, you need Munster need the vast majority of the game to be played up front. I, I think you stop them, and I'll let you come back in. You stop them by denying them ball. Yeah. So they have to win the pack. Munster pack has to go be well beyond parity, I think. And they have to dominate the set piece. Their scrum and their line out have to be absolutely flawless. They have to be brilliant over the ball. And that's where Tommy O'Donnell's a serious loss. But you would hope that Peter Armani has another unbelievable game um, to lose the amount of guys they have that are really good off the ball. The guys like Chris Farrell, for example, uh, to lose Clute as well is such a brilliant season. Jacko Taute, if they those three guys on the pitch, when it comes to getting over the ball and stealing some Toulon ball or make it, making whatever ball they do get as slow as possible, it's such a different game, but they're all missing. Earls is missing. That bit of physicality and kind of aggressive um, strength is missing in the back line. You know, Rory Scandal and Sam Arnold, they showed in, uh, in the Leicester games, in the, in the Racing games, that um, they're very, very good players. And, you know, they've played really well in that position together, but it's just having that bit of strength and that bit of power that Farrell brings. He's six foot three, 110 kilos. Tote is a very big man as well. Earl's then, that bit of X factor that he has and the way he's been playing, can do something brilliant out of a counter attack, one little chance. And, and that's all taken out. Cloute is so good at the breakdown. I thought Tommy O'Donnell was outstanding last week till he got injured. And it's that bit of experience. Blaine Dell, you know, if Ian Keatley is a little bit of an indifferent performance, you, the options off the bench, you probably have to move Scandal in 10 if he got, if he got injured. Um, Duncan Williams, even with Murray, being the best scrum half in the world, you know, Duncan Williams coming on, that bit of experience as well. So um, that's that will affect him. But... How do you stop them? The pack have to have, have a, an awesome performance, I think. They're capable of it. I was really impressed with them last week in the second week. Uh, and they have to raise that intensity and hope that maybe fitness, passion, pride and that stuff will kick in as well. Mm. Sam Lee, he's just been in touch and he's asking, would he prefer to see Copeland or Jack O'Donoghue start versus Toulon against O'Mahony and Stander? Copeland is the only player in the squad to beat Toulon when he was with Cardiff. That's a question mark at the end of that. So uh, I think he's correct in that. Yeah, we beat them in, uh, I think it was 2010. I don't think there's anyone left, is there? Everyone's gone from that team. Um, he did, he beat them with, with Cardiff in the Challenge Cup a number of years ago. Copeland, for me, Jack who is, is probably the one that they'll play there. Um, Copeland's played really well in the last, you know, throughout that, that Six Nations period. Uh, but I think Jack O'Donoghue can probably fit that role as a seven. Um, he's physical, Jack O'Donoghue. He's going to have to really step up mm -hmm. to go into that position. And like we said about the, the open sides, they're a loss. But I think O'Donoghue is a, is a player, and, and he'd probably look at some of the other younger players within that have got into the Irish side and maybe a bit of frustration. If he has a big game, he mm -hmm. elevates himself back in that scene. 
very, very talented guy, and I like his physicality and aggression. He's hard. It seems he's got everything back on track now because it was November 2016, wasn't it, when he plays yeah, the November yeah. tests, and you start to think this guy is the, the next big thing. Just give him a few more caps, keeps his fitness up at Munster, and he could become a, an absolute dead cert for Ireland in the future. And people were a little bit worried about his form at the start of the season, but certainly come the end of the Champions Cup pool stages, I think those those worries have been diminished a little bit, haven't they? Yeah, they have. He's very talented and he's aggressive and he's strong and he's hard and he's developing still. And sometimes others develop quicker. You know, some people develop a little bit quicker. We see that with Levy, um, the way he's come on the scene and kind of overtaken a lot of the other challengers to, to, to get into that back row group for Joe Schmidt. So it'll be a big ask for him, but I think it's, I think it's going to be Jack O'Donoghue who will start there. Will they do the business tomorrow? You might have to give two different yeah, answers here, one yeah. with the heart and one with the head. Yeah, that's probably... The heart says one. Munster, obviously. What's the head say? The head says too long when you look at the, the group. Um, there is uncertainty about the way they travel. Um, but then you start naming the players, like I said, and you think, how do you stop these guys? How do you... Like, they can, they can just create wave after wave of attack. And you're talking about Bastro and Nanu. That's le you're leaving out an all-black then in Fekatoa. If he doesn't start to come off the bench, you have two Sova on the wing. Uh, Is this the best actual iteration Ashton, of Toulon we've seen? Ashton has been outstanding for him. Mm. He's yeah. scoring so many tries. If you kick the ball to two Sova and Chris Ashton loosely, they're just going to scream back at you. If they get quick ball, I don't think Munster have a chance of winning the game. It's the thing about what Munster need to do is really crank up the pressure and, and keep uh, it kind of relentless. Um, you know, aggression and they've got to win the collisions. They Kick blew, chase is massive, They blew it? Leicester away in Thomond Park, yeah. you know. They blew them away with so much just pressure on so them. efficient at the breakdown. So you got to say, will Toulon, can they cope with that kind of relentless pressure? They're used to being on the front fit, pretty dominant at home, and then the away form, as I said. So, you know, the head says Munster. Uh, the head, the heart says Munster. The head says is veering towards Toulon. And I think people will understand that yeah. when they see the quality they have. But, you know, I, I just really hope that they get it right and that, uh, because, because it's, it's a massive prize for this group. And I think, to be fair to them, there's been, the form has been a little bit indifferent this year uh, in, in the league. Um, but in Europe, they were outstanding. Mm. They were absolutely fantastic and they deserve to top that group. So they've achieved a hell of a lot. Um, it'd be a massive achievement for to put themselves in the semi-finals. Yeah, uh, Leinster Saracens then on Sunday, possibly the tie the round. Like Leinster have been waiting for this crack at Saracens for quite some time. Yeah, and what jumps out at me is uh, when we were chatting about it, Ireland England Twickenham. Is this a little bit of a revenge mission for some of those Saris guys? Uh, is it a chance for redemption? Is it a chance to say, well, uh, we're back. Um, we're not. You know, maybe don't don't judge us on the on the performance in the Six Nations. We're still a good side. And we're still good players. Farrell is key for them. Does he play 50-50, Mark McCall said. Um, he'll decide today after training. They say England are a different team without Billy Villapola. Saracens are a different team without him, there's no doubt. Um, but they still have a hell of amount of quality there. And I think they'll probably, sometimes when you kind of sneak into the pool stage, into the knockout stages, you get a massive sense of relief because their form was indifferent in the, in the pool stages. Very dangerous side. Probably the worst side that, that Leinster could get. Bad timing as well. Given yeah. the, the, the upward trajectory up to second now in the Premiership. Yeah. Do you buy into that at all? Do you, do you um, think momentum... Like well, they've got a bit. They've got their season back on track a bit. Yeah. Um, you look at the players they have. Liam Williams. Barrett is going to play. He got a plate in his jaw this week. I mentioned Farrell. But there's Maitland there as well. Wick, Wigglesworth. Um, Jamie George. Toje. Schalke Berger. Um, but on paper, they're not a better team than Leinster. Like this, is a complete opposite to our preview of the Munster Toulon game, where pound for pound in nearly every position, bar maybe scrum half, you're thinking or full back possibly the Toulon of the better players. But I wouldn't. I'd I'd love to go through the two teams, Leinster and Saracens, and and pick how many of the Saris boys will get into the Leinster starting fifteen. Because your question on timing is a valid one, Owen. But at the same time. 
Had this quarterfinal been played before the Six Nations, for example, the amount of experience that James Ryan, Andrew Porter, Dan Levy, that these guys are suddenly yeah. very feeling very good about themselves, very comfortable in their own skin as, as potential superstars, performers on the absolute biggest stage. They've beaten Scotland, Wales and Italy at the Aviva Stadium, so this is very much within their compass now. And they got a little bit of a wake-up call, even though it's a different team last week in Ospreys. That, that would kind of focus the minds. Um, they cannot underestimate Saris in any way and think, well, we were brilliant in the pool stage, we were a dominant team in Europe, best team in Europe, well, they we're supposed to win now. They've got to really, Saracens are going to throw the kitchen sink at this because it's a kind of a bonus situation for them, isn't it? They were Saracens focused the mind more than any other side, Absolutely. I would have thought. That Absolutely. It had it been yep. maybe yep. a side that had scraped into the last eight like Saracens did, but didn't have any real European pedigree. Yep. Yep. You're up against the side that have won a couple of Premiership titles in the last three years, two European Cups. There's absolutely no chance that any of the Lancer players are complacent or thinking they're just going to have to meander their way through this quarter-final, look forward to the last and four. And it's massive if they win it. And, and I know I mentioned that English revenge. It's not revenge, but it's, it's a chance for those English players playing for Saracens to go, we're still here, we're still quality, we're still good players. Mm. Um, and it's massive. If for Mark McCall, you know, it's a bonus situation because they just scraped in at the, with the skin of their teeth into the, uh, in eighth place to get here. Um, will the Aviva really pose a massive fear factor for them. I heard Charles Berger saying this week it's an awesome place to play and that they're really looking forward to going there. And he's, uh, I think if it was, I was a Saracens player, I'd be saying, look, out of the RDS, you know, going to the Aviva, it's not a bad situation for them. I know there'll be predominantly Leinster fans there. Um, but if Saracens settle well there, a lot of these guys have played there before, they can be dangerous. Um, but look, you've got to say Leinster, um, the quality throughout the side is phenomenal. Robbie Henshaw's a loss uh, because he's abrasiveness and he's aggressiveness. Nassiwa and, and Ringrose will probably play. And Ringrose will only be better from the Six Nations coming back. Very little game time played. Um, but Sexton, again, we speak about Munster and Murray. Sexton is vital for, for this side. You know, he's just such a leader, such, such a winner. And he'll have been driving kind of the standard for a big performance this weekend. Yeah, no question at all. That, that is the second fixture on Sunday. You've got Claremont Racing as well. And this evening, Scarlet's La Rochelle uh, as well. Just just finally, I know you've got to go. One quick word on Connacht Gloucester. Who's going to win that uh, tomorrow afternoon? It's obviously a huge game for Connacht. It's massive, I think. And their form in the league has been, you know, very, very indifferent. Um, I think they're good enough to win it, to get a result. It, it's, it's a chance for them to get into Europe because I think in the Pro 14, it's going to be very difficult for them now. They're way back down. Um, this is a massive chance to we'll try and win the Challenge Cup. And plus, in the pool stages, they were they were brilliant. So this is a chance to kind of create that bit of a bit of energy there. Um, Their want is much greater. Yeah, I think. Yeah, yeah. Like, this is conic season. The problem is they're going to have to travel to either Newcastle or Breve in a semi-final if they win tomorrow. So it'll be a one really tough game followed by an even tougher game. But it's definitely within their capacity to win tomorrow. Yeah. Without question. Quinny, thanks a million for that. Thank Enjoy you. the weekend.